At the onset of spring, nature and humans celebrate with colors together. This celebration for Indians is an expression of gratitude towards the powers of nature. These powers are devtas. But who are these devtas? Amar Kosh, one of the oldest dictionaries of Sanskrit, gives many synonyms for Devta. The first two are Amar, the immortal, and Nirjhar, that which does not decay. Devtas are different forms of our consciousness. Consciousness is immortal, therefore Devtas are immortal. And consciousness never decays, therefore Devtas never get old. Now you know why devtas are always shown as youthful. In Sanskrit, the origin of words is very logical and scientific. Rishis composed a treatise called Nirukta to explain the origin of Vedic words. Rishi Yask in his Nirukta explains the origin of the word deva as devodhanadva, tyonadva, deepnadva. Meaning, the nourishing powers are devtas, self-illuminating powers are devtas, and energy-giving sources are devtas. According to the Mahabharata, the characteristic of the devta is light. Devtas illuminate our intellect, emotions and senses with knowledge. That is why they are experienced indirectly. We cannot see devtas, but they are always watching us closely. The Veda says there are 33 types of devtas. This human body is not ours alone, but a dwelling place of many devtas. The earth is the devta of our body. The sun is the devta of eyes. The moon of our emotions. Fire is the devta of digestion, and so on. Veda says that the relation between humans and devtas is that of equals. Both nurture each other. The divine powers of nature nourish human beings, and in turn, humans make offerings with reverence. This is known as yagya. But for both, only physical nourishment is not enough. Tapa, penance, and dhyana, meditation, also nurture them mutually. When the Buddha and Mahavir did tapas, devtas showered flowers on them. It is said that when devtas are pleased with the good deeds of humans, they shower flowers on earth. Humans and devtas nurture their emotional well-being through kalas and vidyas, arts and knowledge. Devtas are formless, but want to take forms. So they appear in the minds of artists and take form in stones through their hands. In India, there was never a time in history when the idols of Devtas were not worshipped. Idol worship is one of the longest continuities of India. In spite of the Gyan of the Upanishads, and meditation of the shamans, Hindus have always worshipped devtas in nature and in stone. This world is perceived by a name and a form. When the name and form of a devta expresses itself in stone or wood, it becomes a devta personified. This is known as archa avatar, manifestation of a deity to worship. The idol itself is not the devta. Devta is in the form. Devta is in the bhav of the form. In Sanskrit, bhav means an emotional state of being. This state of being is a state beyond the intellect. This bhav 
is full of rasa, emotional feelings. Raso ve saha, verily, that Brahma is rasa. So existence is also full of rasa. Are the arts through which human beings experience rasa a psychological phenomenon? Are pleasure and pain experienced only in the human brain? Dr. Ramachandran is one of the world's leading brain scientists. His experiments have been proved to be revolutionary. Until about 50 years ago, 30 years ago, or even 20 years ago, the standard model of brain function was that there are highly specialized modules. So there's a serial, hierarchical, modular, bucket brigade organization of brain. Partially true. It's a good working hypothesis when, when they began this research. The work of many of my colleagues and some of my work shows the opposite. That each of these modules, far from being completely hardwired, there's a basic scaffolding that's laid down by genes. Shows a tremendous malleability. Mrigan Kasur, for example, at, at MIT, who's one of my colleagues, he has shown very elegantly that in, in a very young ferret, visual area can be taken over by auditory input. Then it becomes auditory, the cortex. That the modules concerned with vision don't do just vision. They come in influence, touch, and proprioception. So vision eliminates pain. He studied the patients who had lost their limbs or had undergone amputation. He called the absent limb a phantom limb. Patients experience pain and feelings in their phantom limb. This is real, not just psychological. This is not some psych psychic mumbo jumbo or, or some telepathy or anything like that. This process is, is evident in, our, in all our experiments. But by watching you poke with a needle affects my pain regions. And say, I'm almost tempted to say, ouch, and pull my hand away. Feel your pain. Neurons are fine. But I don't literally feel the pain. Otherwise, I'll go crazy. But because the skin here is intact and it's telling me, don't worry. Empathy, empath empathize with this person. You know what it's like to experience that person's pain, but don't feel it because you're normal. Don't, don't worry. But if I remove the skin, this is what we found, amputate, then I feel your pain. You poke you with a needle, I say, ow, I feel it. You don't merely say, I empathize with your pain. You literally feel it. But that veto signal is gone. Clinically, you can apply this because if, if I feel excruciating, excruciating muscle aches and pain in the phantom, there's nothing I can do about it, traditionally. Now we've proved, if I just watch you, your arm being massaged, I feel the phantom massage in my phantom, eliminating the phantom pain. This shows the, the extent of interaction. So you interact, the brain modules are interacting with the skin, with each other, bottom up, top down, and with other brains, other human brains. And this is an extraordinarily dynamic system, very different from your average computational model of vision. This means that the consciousness of the limb exists even without its physical existence. Modern science knows very little about consciousness. Vedic rishis not only experienced consciousness in human beings, but also in plants and animals, and even in all inert matter. मुझे चेतना मनुष्य में दिखाई देती है इतनी बात नहीं है पशु पक्षी में दिखाई देती है इतनी बात नहीं है पेड़ पौधों में दिखाई देती है इतनी बात भी नहीं है मुझे वो चेतना पत्थर में भी दिखाई देती है This world is but a play of the consciousness Therefore the Ved says that the 16 colors forms of art of the creator is holding the cosmos. There is a discipline to experience the world through colors. And its purpose is liberation. For this discipline, the Vedic Rishis created a treatise called Natya Shastra. I believe that the Natya Shastra is the first time with Rigved. There are the songs in it, and there are the songs in it. So, as soon as the performance comes, there is also the Shastra. There is also the Shastra. How do you 
पुरोहित यहाँ खड़ा होगा जो सोम खरीदने वाला वो यहाँ खड़ा होगा वो इस तरह से बोलेगा वो यज्ञ के बीच में एक नाटक वो खड़ा करते हैं उसका मैनुअल है ब्राह्मण ग्रंथों में कि वो ऐसे ऐसे कहेंगे इस दिशा में देखेंगे इस एवं परिक्रमा करेंगे ये सारी जो क्रिया है वो नाटकीय है और उसके लिए एक एक मैनुअल तैयार किया जा रहा है तो नाट्यशास्त्र तो कई हज़ार साल पहले ऋग्वेद के समय से ही चल पड़ा अब जो हम कह रहे हैं बात की वो ज्ञान की एक धारा है मौखिक परंपरा में है उसके सारे निर्देश उनको कोई फिर संकलित करता है उनका डॉक्यूमेंटेशन करता है तो संविधा बन जाती है तो एक नटसूत्र में एक संविधा बनी जिसके कि लेखक भी शिलाली कहे गए और शिलाली मूलतः वैदिक पुरोहित है जो वेद में यज्ञ कराने वाले पुरोहित हैं तो शिलाली ने उस वैदिक यज्ञ की प्रक्रिया में जो नाटक होते हुए देखे थे उन उनके हिसाब से एक नटसूत्र कोई लिखा फिर कोई आदि भरत हैं वृद्ध भरत हैं फिर भरत मुनि आते हैं और भी कई आचार्य हैं जो कि नाट्यशास्त्र उसकी परंपरा में उल्लिखित होते हैं On its completion, he offered it to the devtas, who refused to receive it. They said, "We cannot hold this natya because we cannot perform the penance and meditation necessary for it. Only a yogi can hold it." So Adi Yogi Shiva accepted and was called Natraj. Natya Shastra, in a way, is a treatise of yoga. A yogi sees the drama of the world within himself. Shiva Sutra, a treatise of yoga, says, "For a yogi, the actor who plays in the drama of the cosmos is his own self. The stage in this cosmic dance is nothing but the inner being, Antaratma. The spectator of this cosmic dance." is one's own cognitive and sense organs ha natya ka prayojan bharat muni ne jo bataya ki log jo sansar ke sukhi aur dukhi hain apne apne dukhon mein doobe hue hain thake haare hain jeevan ke prapanchon se ghabraye hue hain unko rahat dene ke liye ye ye ek ek panchwa ved avishkrit kiya ja raha hai khas taur se actors ke manual ke roop mein natya shastra mooltah likha gaya unke liye pura shastra ek एक एक सर्वांगीण ग्रंथ है जो हमारे एस्थेटिक्स का संगीत का अभिनय का और भी जितनी कलाएं हो सकती हैं नृत्य कला विशेष रूप से और इतना इतना बड़ा ग्रंथ इतना विशाल का व्यवस्थित ग्रंथ जिसमें कि हमारा सारा चिंतन और सारी जो प्रायोगिक परंपरा है उसको लेकर के और एक साइंटिफिक डिस्कोर्स बनाया गया हो अन्य किसी देश में इस तरह का कोई ग्रंथ इतना प्राचीन नहीं लिखा गया A music composer must have the knowledge of poetry. A dancer must have the knowledge both of poetry and music. But an actor must know the rasas of poetry, music and dance. The art of acting can give freedom from the bondages of life. Hence liberation is at the feet of Natraj. In fact, the whole universe is dancing in the form of Natraj.
but a mirror image of Natraj. The goal of Indian art is to penetrate into the innermost rasa of being. हमारे यहां सिद्धांत हर जगह एक ही है दर्शन में जो परब्रह्म है द समम बोनम जीवन का सबसे बड़ा लक्ष्य मुक्ति का अधिष्ठान जो परब्रह्म है वही जो है संगीत शास्त्र में नाद ब्रह्म है वही व्याकरण शास्त्र में अक्षर ब्रह्म है और वही चित्रकला में आकर के वही चित्र ब्रह्म हो जाता है उसी को चित्र ब्रह्म कहा गया है और उसी को जो है मूर्ति कला में उसी को दारु ब्रह्म कहा गया है आप पूरी के मंदिर में जाइए वहां भगवान की जो मूर्ति है उसको दारु ब्रह्म कहते हैं क्योंकि वो लकड़ी वो ब्रह्म है लेकिन लकड़ी के रूप में है The goal of Indian sculptors is not just to portray the physical body. The Pandavas were mighty warriors. The sculptors could have made their figures masculine. But then the attention of the seeker would be limited to the body. Hence their eyes are crafted to look within. The inner flow of rasa of the Indian artist was so intense and dynamic. that observation of their art can bring samadhi to the trained mind the artist would do mantra recitation meditation and practice austerity for months before asking the devta please come in my dream to reveal what form i should create murti ko jab samjhaya hai raja bhoj ne तो कहा कि मूर्ति मूर्ति को मूर्ति कहते क्यों है मूर्ति का लक्षण क्या है स्वाकार लक्षण होती है मूर्ति माने उस देवता का आकार ही उसका लक्षण है पहले तो ये कहा कि मूर्ति की जरूरत क्या है कि उपास्य जो होता है उसका जब तक आपके सामने नाम रूप नहीं होगा आप उपासना करेंगे कैसे उपासना हवा में तो होती नहीं है जब आप किसी की पूजा करना चाहेंगे अर्चना करना चाहेंगे तो जो समर्च है उसका कोई रूप होना चाहिए आपके सामने तो कहा फिर रूप कैसे बनाएंगे क्योंकि रूप तो जो है नेत्रों का विषय है जब आपने देखा ही नहीं भगवान को तो भगवान का रूप कैसे बनाएंगे जो आकार मेरे मन में बस जाएगा वही हमारा भगवान है तो इसलिए दस चित्रकारों से शंकर को बनवाइए तो दस प्रकार के शंकर बनेंगे लेकिन यह थोड़ो है कि उनकी पूजा करने से ज्यादा पुण्य आपको मिल जाएगा और दूसरे महल्ले वाले से कम मिलेगा इसलिए कि मूर्ति जो है स्वाकार लक्षण होती है दीज आर नॉट मियरली आइडल्स दे आर एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ प्रोफाउंड एक्सपीरियंसिस ऑफ ह्यूमन एवोल्यूशन आफ्टर क्रिएटिंग द आइडल डिवाइन पावर इज इंफ्यूज इन दम थ्रू प्राण प्रतिष्ठा आफ्टर दिस सेरेमनी द आइडल्स आर नॉट सिंपली स्कल्पचर्स बट लिविंग गॉड्स The deity is then worshipped with poetry, music, dance, and drama. This is the meaning of idol worship. Some creations of modern art look distorted. Dr. Ramachandran says these are not distortions, but reality overemphasized. Its purpose is to influence the brain in certain ways. This was also done. by the ancient indian artists well i'll just say there are multiple areas vision is not if you look at visual areas it's not as if there's a picture optical image in the eye retina goes through the nerve a screen there and it's displayed on the screen and you see it that's not people believe that's not true what happens is you get various aspects of visual information color form shape motion depth analyzed by different areas you get in 30 areas specialized for different aspects of vision 30 maps complete maps or partial maps of the visual world they interact with each other and then create the creative process vision involves an opinion on the state of affairs in the world not a passive reaction to the input and if if it do not involve all these areas you just have a screen and you just play it on the screen you see it then there won't be any art because of all this processing the artist can go in 
and more optimally stimulate this area by changing the image, departing from realism. Here in this deity, the large expressing eyes have overshadowed all other body parts. Ancient yogis and tantrics knew the technique of creating a particular divine rasa by enhancing a particular form. Not a photograph, but an exaggerated version of, exaggerated certain key attributes of that. Devote rasa. More to activate different areas differentially, more optimally, more powerfully. Producing multiple stages of activation, creating, what I say, multiple mini ahas. Ah, 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 ah. All happening on a compressed time scale, a matter of seconds. And then it's a final aha of complex of object recognition and enlightenment. <laughs> This can be called an ultra-modern exhibition of art because here the audience becomes a part of the performance. The performance at a temple has greater impact than in a gallery of modern art. The architecture of the temple is a model of cosmic architecture. This aspect is not present in the architecture of modern galleries of art. The deity, the adornments, music, dance and drama in the temple provide an opportunity for the audience to be part of it. Its purpose is to experience the rasa of cosmic creation. In doing so, the audience starts emulating the creator and learns to be detached like him. This Chola Bronze Nataraja, which the English, colonial English, had no understanding of whatsoever. Bird would look at this and said, I call it a multi armed monstrosity. Impossible, it's a monstrosity. We're making a classic mistake, confusing art with realism. Art has nothing to do with realism. I can take a $5 camera, these days, even just my, my cell phone, and take a worthless photograph of you or you or anybody here. It would be worth nothing. It's not a work of art. The goal of art is to capture the spirit or essence of something, what we call rasa. Evoke a specific mood or sentiment in the viewer's brain. How you go from the object, the external world, to the brain and evoke rasa, and nobody says it's in the brain, that's a misconception. Evokes rasa, God knows where, but you, you brain, using the brain as, as, a, as a vehicle to, to resonate to, to this attribute, if you call it rasa. And uh, Bird would completely miss the point of the Nataraja, the metaphorical nuances. People are wax eloquent about this. I'm not an art historian, but you know. People like uh, Zimmer, Ananda Kumar Swami, most recently Naga Swami, who's written admirably on, on, on Shiva, you know, reading it brings you brings tears to your eyes. There's a connoisseurship of, of, of great art. And Shiva and of course, you know, people, Bird would just saw a circle and then holding this man standing there with multiple legs and, and, and feet and arms with fire and you couldn't make no sense of it. But if you understand the, the poetry and the allegory, but even visually it works beautifully because there's poise and balance, you know, raising one leg and one leg is half bent, there's poise, and then his eyes are tranquil, the sense of peace and tranquility, but in the midst of all the agitation of the universe, because the fire, the ring of fire, the dance, evokes the frenzy and agitation of dance, the phenomena of the universe, which are always in a constant state of agitation, the agitation of molecules and, and cells in your body, the flame in one hand, evoking the idea of destruction, the fire of destruction. On the other hand, the tambour is, is the rhythm of creation and, and being born. And creation and destruction balance each other out. So this perfect balance conceptually and also literally is standing in a balanced pose. But the hair is flying off in different directions. So there is this centrifugal energy. So there's this agitation and motion. At the same time, there's peace and tranquility. In the midst of all this agitation, the central truth of God, something immortal and, and uni, unity, one. 
This the artist has conveyed brilliantly in that. How the, how the guy thought of this? Only through divine inspiration, once, so to speak. To have conceived of such, a, such an entity, just, to me, is astonishing. And then if we can go on and on like that, you know, Natra, there's, there's a demon below his left foot. He's crushing this demon. This demon is a demon of, of ignorance, illusion, maya. What is this ignorance? Ignorance that all of us scientists, and indeed non-scientists, suffer from, which is there's this brief appearance, there's this events going on in the world, and I appear briefly, inspect the world from where I am, and I'm gone. It's called death. What the Chola artist is trying to tell you through the Nataraja is, no, you are not an aloof spectator. You're part of this great dance of Shiva. So there is no birth, there's no death. You're part of the eternal, continuous cycle of creation and destruction. Seek enlightenment and give up the maya, the illusion that you are aloof and you are different from the rest of the cosmos. You're part of the cosmic dance. Lose your fear, abhaya. So, so all of this is conveyed by that bronze. And this guy looks at it and says, he's got multiple arms and legs. He called him, if I had gone and looked to a museum in, in, in Europe and looked at angels in Renaissance painting and said, this is a monstrosity, because human beings don't sprout wings. And in fact, I can tell you as a medical person that, that people sprouting a different leg can happen. You see it in, 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 in older teratology literature, anat anatomical literature. Human beings sprouting wings is an absurdity. It never happens. It can't happen. So that's more of a monstrosity, an angel, than, than a, right? But this irony is, of course, lost on these guys. So there's, there's dozens of examples, and, and it, it, it's very important to realize this, that, that our culture is, 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 has this rich, um, harmonious resonance between different aspects of culture, which is quite unique, I think. Deities are the forms of different powers of nature, which are experienced by all humans. A single devta does not possess all the powers. There is a division of power. Some have the power of intellect, others of strength, some of beauty. One provides Ayurveda, another rainwater, while others give light and energy. They are all a family working to nurture us all.